and then welcome to JOLT International 2020. Please welcome Darren Ray Javier presenting on online ESL tutors teaching strategies. Darren. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Steve. So let me present uh, our humble attempt to, to analyze some teaching strategies uh, conducted by some of on online ESL tutors in the Philippines. So by the way, my name is Darren and I am from the Philippines. Okay, so to start with, let me give you some backgrounder about the study. So first, in the Philippines, teaching English is not confined anymore in the four corners of the classroom. That is why uh, this kind of uh, platform, which is online ESL teaching, is a rising industry in the field. Uh, moreover, with the rise of ESL teaching, both face-to-face -face and online, in the Southeast Asia, the uh, Philippines now is considered as a powerhouse when it comes to online ESL industry. I think not only online, but face-to-face uh, -face as well, considering that a lot of foreign nationals are actually going to Cebu just to study English. Next, uh, Filipino teachers' English proficiency made them qualified to teach foreign nationals. As we all know, Philippines is one of the countries in Asia uh, who has a lot of people who can speak English. And recently in the, in the survey of Education First, uh, Philippines ranked 27th worldwide. But even though Philippines uh, go down worldwide, I'm still happy that Philippines ranked second uh, in Asia. And I think it's still um, an achievement for the Philippines. Furthermore, ESL companies in the Philippines offer part-time job online to the teachers here in my country. Actually, this ESL companies, they have their physical office, uh, just like in Japan, as well as in other countries like China. They have their uh, physical office in their country. At the same time, they have their physical office here in the Philippines. Moving on. Here are some of the ESL companies or some of the leading ESL, online ESL companies in the Philippines. So the following are some of the Japanese companies and the others are some of the Chinese companies. Next. Let's now go to the studies on ESL teaching. According to Casa Mayor 2019, Tutors were ensured to be provided with regular training workshops by the ESL companies in order to sustain their professional growth as part of a company's investment. And these companies really provide trainings. I think after three months of being in the service, uh, companies will provide you training on for you to upgrade yourself as an online tutor, because as we all know, there's no such thing that is permanent in this world, but change. So we have to upgrade the reskill and upskill ourselves as teachers, especially teaching online, which requires a lot of skills. Next, we also have Natividad 2016, who mentioned that teachers can teach using these technological tools that can break the tediousness of everyday lectures and facilitate the learning experience in an interactive ways. So later on, you can see that uh, tutors are actually using an online platform that is a really uh, different from the face-to-face -face classes that we are doing in our classroom. Next, another one is from Amja 2014 who mentioned that language teaching has been a complicated task for the teachers of English and appropriate techniques and strategies are needed to deliver effective language learning to ESL learners. So it's not just uh, transferring the face-to-face -face classes into an online platform. So definitely the strategies that we are using in the face-to-face -face session must be different from the strategies that we are supposed to use in an online class. 
And lastly, according to Mulligan 2011, he mentioned that effective teaching strategies have to be flexible, creative, constant, monitoring, and adjustment based on the students' needs. And as we all know, at this time of pandemic, teachers have to be really flexible. And the teaching strategies that they are using must be flexible. It should also be creative. At the same time, they should also be uh, there should be a constant monitoring and adjustment based on the context of the learners and their needs as well. Okay, so here are some of the requirements for you to become an online ESL tutor here in the Philippines. And in terms of technical requirements, an online ESL tutor must have his or her own laptop. Preferably, uh, this laptop must be a core an IE series because if your laptop is below that uh, spec, I think it will cause a lot of problem when it comes to online sessions. Next, uh, an online tutor must also use uh, a headset with an external microphone so that he or she can focus on what he or she is going to say, not holding the, the microphone. Another one is, we, he or she needs uh, an HD webcam so that we, you can see each other and a stable internet connection and most especially an area where there is no background noise. That one is the most important aside from the technical, uh, technical requirements. And in terms of the skills and qualifications, an online tutor must be 18 years old and above. So we cannot, they cannot hire uh, tutors who are 17 below or 18 years old below. Next, uh, a person who has a, a basic knowledge when it comes to computer. So basic knowledge about a Skype, a Zoom and other platforms. It must be able to speak English fluently. And that person must be residing here in the Philippines. And lastly, that person must provide a tax identification number. So if you're not from the Philippines, definitely you will not be able to provide a tax identification number. Moving on. Online, on online teaching, uh, these companies provide a very flexible schedule they also provide a high paying income. And then they also provide international certification like TOEIC, TESOL, and others. And most especially, you can work at the comfort of your home. Next, uh, teachers both from public and private can ac apply to those companies provided that they have complied to the, to the requirements. Actually, not only teachers are welcome to apply, but, but all of the people who are actually affluent in using the language, they can apply in, the, in an ESL company and they will become an online ESL tutor. And lastly, uh, since a few studies explore in online ESL tutors teaching strategies, there is a dearth of studies showing how online ESL tutors do their teachings online and what are the strategies they usually employ in their lessons. So that's the research gap that I would like to fill in. And actually, uh, online industry is still an unexplored area of inquiry. So I am encouraging uh, everyone to actually look into this area because not everyone are doing uh, researches in, in this field. And then for the research question, what are the teaching strategies of online ESL tutors? So later on, I'll be showing you the top strategies that I got based on the videos that I watched. Okay, so for the methodology, uh, I used 10 recorded actual online lessons. This uh, recorded actual lessons are found on YouTube considering that I considered the, the availability of the 
the corpus or the corpora that I utilize in my study. That's why I used YouTube as uh, the reserve of the online lessons. And then in the 10 online lessons, seven of them are Chinese and three of them are Japanese. And then for the tutors, seven of them are female and three of them are male. And lastly, the length of the recorded lesson is, it is a 25 minute recorded online lesson. Moving forward, uh, these are some of the online platforms that an online ESL tutor use uh, when they are teaching. Uh, there is a company who, are, who developed an air classroom, which they are calling it an AC. And then some of them are actually using Class In. I think this one is a free online uh, platform here in the, not only in the Philippines, but I think uh, around the world. And lastly, some of them are taking advantage of the Skype. And later on, and I currently, I just noticed that uh, these online companies have developed their own platform and they are calling it a lesson room. And you don't need to download any application. You just have to use Google Chrome and then you will be able to use the, the lesson room. But it's not av available in public because this platform was developed specifically for online ESL companies. Okay, so for the methodology, I use content analysis to identify the teaching strategies. And then I anchored my study on Shikering and Gamson's 1987, Seven Principles of Good Practice, as well as Rosenshine's 2012, Principles of Effective Instructions. And then for the results and discussion, I divided the the results in discussion into three. I have here the pre-lesson stage, the during lesson stage, and then the post-lesson stage. So let's look into the pre-lesson stage first. And then later on, I'll be showing a video clip of, uh, of an online teacher conducting an online class. So first, here are the top strategies. First, they are greeting their students. Second, they are introducing themselves, both the teacher and the student. And then the tutor is asking general questions as well as a yes or no questions. Most probably it is because they would like to build a rapport with the student because some of the lessons there, they just had the, it's their first time to meet the student. So definitely building rapport is, a, is important in an online class. And lastly, uh, an online tutor verifies the readiness of the student. So let's take a look at the sample video clip. Oh, I believe. Okay. So first one, uh, an online tutor is really careful with the choice of word, considering that um, some of the students are kids and they are not that proficient when it comes to the use of language. So definitely the choice of word must be considered as well. And it's a good strategy so that there will be no misunderstanding as well. And then as you can see, the, the tutor utilized uh, hand gestures and then as well as body movements. I think that is what they are calling the the um, how can I call that? Hand gestures and body movements. A total physical response or the TPR. Most of the online tutors are actually using TPR, especially if they are teaching kids. Next, they usually uh, give praises in order to motivate the, the learners. And yeah, I repeat the choice of words on that. Next. They also ask comprehension questions whenever they are reading a story, as well as they are discussing something that requires uh, comprehension among the online students. Next, 
they, they, they also provide uh, corrections through repetition when it comes to grammar. And they are also guiding students with the learning material. So they verify if the students can follow them using the, the material. And lastly, they give online practices in order to make sure that the student is actually learning the, the topic that they are discussing. So let's take a look at the sample video. Oh, you know it. Let's see. It's the post-lesson stage. So first one, the shooter wraps up the lesson. The tutor is also providing a feedback. Minutes. Yeah, okay. Uh, following the sandwich method. And the tutor is also manages the time. If it is a, a 25 minute lesson, definitely the tutor should not exceed on that time uh, provided in the lesson, just like in the presentation. I should not exceed it in the 25 minute uh, presentation. And lastly, there is a 50% student and teacher talk. So let's take a look at the sample video because I just chose some video clips that because of the time constraint as well. So I will not be able to show the other videos showing the strategies in the, in the list. But let's now go to the conclusion, concluding part. So for the first conclusion, uh, findings reveal that, that Online ESL tutors are adaptive in handling different kinds of lessons or students rather for each lesson because in each lesson they have a different students and they are a very adaptive on that. Uh, moreover, online ESL tutors employ the different teaching strategies appropriate to each student, considering that uh, students are diverse. In nature, they have different backgrounds as well as different proficiency when it comes to the language use, specifically the use of English. Next, these teaching strategies from pre, during, and post lessons are some of the best practices used by the tutors. And lastly, aspiring online ESL tutors can improve their teaching skills by watching this video recorded actual lessons available online. And before I end, I end this presentation, uh, at this time and age uh, or during the COVID-19 pandemic, I believe that uh, teachers in the classroom must collaborate with the online tutors because not every one of us have actually the, the experience in conducting an online class. So definitely we need the help from these online tutors because they are the one who are more experienced when it comes to, uh, to the use of online platforms in teaching the language. And that would be all, thank you. Very good, thanks Darren, very good job. So we've got a couple of minutes if anyone has any questions for Darren or if you'd like to exchange emails or contact information to follow up later. Any questions from the audience? And what I'd like to recommend is we um, turn off your micro, turn, uh, turn on your microphones or use one of the emoji and give Darren a round of applause. Thank you so uh, much, Steve. I enjoy this a lot. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, the room is actually open for lunch break until 1235. So if folks have questions, feel free to, to, to go ahead and continue discussing or, or, or talking um, after we're finished. But thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much, Steve. Have a great day. Okay. Let's stop the recording.